And we're back. Um, Walloon is more distinct. Sorry, Walloon is more distinct as a language than Belgian French, which differs from the French spoken in France only in some minor points of vocabulary and pronunciation. Disputed nature of Walloon. Well, Walloon. Linguists had long classified Walloon as a dialect of French, which in turn is a langue d'oeil. Like French, it descended from vulgar Latin arguing that a French-speaking person could not understand Walloon easily, especially in its eastern forms, Jules Feller, from 1859-1940, insisted that Walloon had an original superior unity, which made it a language. Okay, yeah, mutual intelligibility is important. Um, the phonological di divisions... I said that weird. The, the phonological divisions of regional languages of southern Belgium were studied by the contemporary linguist E.B. Atwood, he defined the precise geographical repartition of the four chief dialects of Walloon. In addition, he defined them against the, the dialects of Picard, Lorraine, and Champenois. Since then, most linguists, citation needed, most ling linguists among them, uh, Louis Remacle, I don't know his name, and gradually also Walloon politicians regard Walloon as a regional language, the first in the first in importance in Wallonia. It is the only one to have originated from that part of Belgium. The 11th edition, in edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica identified Walloon as the northernmost Romance language. Let's real quick kind of look at our side widget here. It's native to Belgium and France. The region is Wallonia, the Ardennes, minority in Door County, Wisconsin. It's freaking wild. Uh, we'll, we'll look into that a little later probably. Ethnicity is Walloons. 600,000 people have some knowledge of it as of 2007. Possibly only 300,000 active speakers in rural Wallonia. Its language family is Indo-European to Italic to Latino Faliscan to Romance, Italo-Western, Western Romance, Gallo-Romance, Rado Romance, possibly oil and I don't know if that's pronounced oil or what. Um, I apologize if you can hear my dog clacking around in the background. She has an issue with sitting still. Uh, early forms are Old Latin, Vulgar Latin, Proto-Romance, Old Gallo-Romance, Old French. And now we've also got Wisconsin Walloon, which is crazy to me. It uses the Latin alphabet, and there are different um, standards given there. And it is considered definitely endangered. Cool. All righty. <coughs> Pardon me. Geographic distribution. Walloon is spoken in the Wallonia region in Belgium. In addition, it is spoken in a small part of France, the Pointe de Givet in northern Ardennes, and several villages in Nord Département, <laughs> making it one of the regional languages of France. A small district of Door County, Wisconsin, U.S., owing to fairly large-scale immigration there in the 19th century, as well as portions of the Kewanee County, Wisconsin, and Brown County, Wisconsin. And it's also spoken in Brussels by some Walloon residents. Although Walloon was widely spoken until the mid 20th century, today only a small portion, sorry, small proportion of the inhabitants of the region are fluent in the language. Those born since the 1970s usually know little more than a few idiomatic expressions, often profanities, God bless. The Walloon language is still part of the Walloon heritage. It is one component of Walloon identity. Dialects. Four dialects of Walloon developed in four distinct zones of Wallonia. Central, spoken in Namur, the Walloon capital, and the cities of Wavre, Wavre, Ave, and Dinat. Oh, that's the place that I had mentioned earlier. Yes, this, look, at, look at these pictures really quick. This place is so freaking beautiful. Look at that. My goodness. Oop, there's their beautiful flag, their coat of arms. Um, there's where it's located within Namur, Belgium, uh, after World War I. Look at that place. Little castle up here. Oopsie. Mm. What a place to live. Freaking gets me when you, when you see stuff like this. It looks so, just like so, I don't know, from my point of view, it feels so distant, like such a far off thing. Like, this is some place of fancy. I love this painting. I want to get this framed or something. I, I need a print of it. But, you know, just it just feels like such a distant place. And then you stop to think, like, no, there are people living on these streets. Well, 
probably yeah on the streets but in the apartments day to day like people's lives are in this town and, you know they they have unique individuality yes we all do so i don't know just the existentialism of it gets me anyway beautiful place do not um also dialect is the eastern dialect in many respects the most conservative and idiosyncratic of the dialects spoken in, in lija thank you for that transcription lija uh also in vervi and mamdi and hu and war warame i don't know i don't speak french sorry western dialect the dialect closest to french proper and with a strong picard influence spoken in Charleroi uh, and Nivelle and Phil Philippeville, Philippeville. And finally, the Southern dialect close to the Lorraine and to a lesser extent, Champenois languages spoken in, in Bastogne, Marge and Femme, and Neufchâteau and in all the Ardennes region. Despite, a local, uh, despite local phonetic differences, there is a regional movement towards the adoption of a common spelling called the Rifondo Wallon. This orthography is uh, diasystematic, reflecting different pronunciations for different readers, a concept inspired by the spelling of Breton. The, the written forms attempt to reconcile current phonetic uses with ancient traditions, notably the reintroduction of XH and OI that were used for writing Walloon until the late 19th century, and the language's own phonological logic okay so different same, same spelling but different pronunciation for different readers i feel like we got some stuff with that in regards to accents in in um in english but maybe not to the same extent i don't fully understand diasystematism whatever other regional languages spoken in wallonia outside the wallon domain are picard in mons at in Tronne, lorraine in Virton, Champenois, in Bonn, in Luxembourgish, in Arlon, in Martelange. The Picard Lewin and Champenois dialects spoken in Wallonia are sometimes also referred to as Walloon, which may lead to confusion. Fair enough. Okay, here I actually I do want to focus on this, the phonetics and phonology. We'll see if I still got my um my IPA down. So we've got a labial nasal, so mmm. Dental alveolar nasal, mm. palatal na. Oh, sorry, let's let's just go through ma, na. Well, actually, technically, it's ma, a ma, na, a na, na, a na, na, nga, a nga, pa, a pa, ta, a ta, a cha, ka, a ka, ba, a ba, da, a da. Ja, a ja, ga, a ga, fa, a fa, sa, a sa, sha, a sha. Uh, well, I already have a lisp, so this is hard. Sa, a sa. Or it's like, sha, I don't actually know which this one is. It's a frigative, it's palatal. Sha, I don't know if I use the tip of my tongue or the middle part of my tongue for that. Um, Sha, a sha, wait, is that sha, ha? I don't know. And then epi, uh, a glottal, a ha, a ha. Va, za, <laughs> look at me, I'm just flying through now. Um, post avular is ja, wait, va, za, ja, I guess ja, because that's ja, ja, I forget. Ra, Ra, I don't, I don't have a good uvular chill. Ra, like that. La, ya, uh, ya, and wa. Vowels we have e, u, u, e, a, o, e, o, e, o, o, e, o. <laughs> Sorry if that was really annoying, but uh, if you like phonetics and you like listening to some schlubby little white kid, no, wait, I'm not a kid anymore, darn it. If you like listening to some schlubby white dude take a stab at 
weird French phonetics. Sorry, they're not French. Weird Wallonian phonetics. Then I'm sure you enjoyed that. My my IPA is not great. I recognize that, but I at least know what it should sound like in my head. Um, yeah, that's fun. I like that. So the Latin K before A and G, uh, sorry, the Latin K before A and G before E, I, or A, give Walloon African phonemes spelled cha and ja, uh, vach versus French, French vash, jambe. It's, uh, okay. Wait, oh, those gave Walloon Africade uh, phonemes spelled like that. Okay, I get you, I get you. So K before A led to that, to cha, and G before E leads to ja. Latin S persisted in clusters. Um, I'm not going to even try to pronounce these. Um, okay, cool. They persist. The final obstruent devoicing, hoje, hoje, red, is pronounced exactly as hoch. Okay, hoch, what? Okay, I don't know. I, I don't I don't do French or French languages. Languan langue whatever. Nasal vowels may be followed by nasal consonants. As in don't know these pronunciations. Queen Clum Clum Monet Jean. The only nasal stuff I have is from Portuguese. Vowel length has a phonological value. It allows distinguishing cou arse and cu cooked okay so cool just like in portuguese rump uh vowel length has phonological value okay so cool is but and cool is cooked i suppose you know minding my individual pronunciation los he cradles her her or ilos he increases it miss or miss master or sorry mass and master of course, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but I hope you get the gist. Increasing the length of a vowel can change the meaning. Cool. I hope that was at least somewhat interesting. I know it was definitely long and whatever. If you're listening to this on a commute, then I don't know. You're probably half paying attention anyway. So yeah, works out great. Maybe. I don't know. Moving on. Orthography. The Walloon alphabet generally consists of basic ISO Latin alphabet and six types of diacritic. It also makes frequent use of diagraphs. Various orthographies have been used, most notably, notably the Feller system and the and, uh, unified Walloon. Characteristics. Walloon is, sorry, the language family. Walloon is distinguished from other languages in the Langdoil family by both archaism. Is that, is that how you, why am I doubting myself on this word? I feel like I should not. Archaism, cool, cool, cool. Sorry. Um, distinguished from other languages in its family, both by archaism coming from Latin and by its significant borrowing from Germanic languages, as expressed in its phonetics, its lexicon, and its grammar. At the same time, Walloon phonetics are singularly conservative. The language has stayed fairly close to the form it took during the High Middle Ages. Fascinating. Morphology. The plural feminine adjectives before the noun takes an unstressed ending. Let me say that one more time. The plural feminine adjectives before the noun takes an unstressed ending, which it has marked as uh, apostrophe, not apostrophe. I forget my diacriticals. Uh, E-S, with a mark over the E, except in the Arden dialect. Uh, compare li the letter, the, the yellow leaf, and le jaune fouille, the, the yellow leaves. So what are we saying here? Okay. Okay. When, when you have plural feminine adjectives, the noun has an ES added. I don't know how pronunciation works because I think in some French things are skipped over, some S sounds are skipped over. But we have le jaune fouille and then... I'll read more Americanized. It's les janes foyers for the plural of the yellow leaves. Don't know how that comes out in pronunciation. There is no gender difference in definite articles and possessives except in the Ardennes dialect. Compare Walloon, li vitre, 
the car, feminine, and les sœurs, the sky, masculine. So they both use the same definite article. Um, versus the French, la voiture and le ciel. La voiture and le ciel. Balloon has si quoi, his or her body, masculine, and si finisse, his or her widow, feminine. So there we have possessive that is not changing uh, for gender. It's always si. Uh, versus French has son corps and sans fin finitre. Sans, sans finitre. I don't speak French. Man, I say that a lot. <laughs> I just have been on a lot of French French stuff here. Um, anyway, lexicon. Walloon has a few Latin remnants that have disappeared from neighboring Romance languages. Compare Walloon despierte to Spanish despertar. And Romanian despet, deshtepta, I don't know. Uh, all meaning to awaken. Okay. The most distinctive feature in its number of borrowings from Germanic languages, Dutch and German dialects, Compare Walloon flower to today's Dutch flower, weak, uh, which is a cognate of English flaw. Other common borrowings, among hundreds of others, are twinkle, tip, uh, which is tip, uh, the Dutch twinkle, and kole, or curl, the Dutch kool. Spitter, to spatter, same, as the root, uh, sa same root as the English to spit, spitter and to spew, or German spitzen, and Dutch spuven. Lischpreuwe, the starling, or Dutch spreu, and German sperling. Okay, that was a test of my Germanic pronunciations. I briefly studied Dutch, like, I think when I first got into languages back in uh, 2014 or 15, Dutch was like the first language I studied. I did not know how to effectively study a language, and I don't know why I chose Dutch. No offense if if this even is something offensive. I don't think I don't think many Dutch people would be offended by me saying this, but it's not a useful language. Like most Dutch people speak like German, French, and English as well. And um, yeah, no no good reason for a uh, American fellow such as myself to learn Dutch. But I tried to do it. Didn't get very far, but. I could tell people that I spoke Dutch, and even though I didn't really, um, and I could sing. Well, I was young and stupid. I could also sing songs in Dutch. I liked Achten de Munich. If uh, if you're from the Netherlands, you might know Paul Achten and Tom de Munich. They are a great band, duo. I like them. Cool. Um, syntax: the adjective is often placed before the noun. So we've got Walloon en fort. What is this? Un fort homme with French un homme fort, a strong man. We also have un blanquen maison and the French un maison blanche, a white house. So, yeah, they just put their adjective before nouns. Borrowing from Germanic languages to construction, this is hard. Okay. Que ce c'est de sapon et fleur? What kind of flower is this? Yeah, uh, okay, that's hard. Uh, can be compared word for word to German. Was ist das für eine Blume? Wait, what kind of flower? Was ist das für, was ist das für eine Blume? In Dutch, what is that? What, what is that? Shoot. What is that for in, in, what is that for in Blume? As opposed to standard French, quelle sorte de fleur est ce? Or colloquially, Quelle sorte de fleur est ce que c'est? Yep, cool languages. Don't know them. Great. So it has similar word structure. Uh, history. Man, this is a long one. But, you know, like I said, if y'all are commuting or something, then whatever. I know when <laughs> I've been listening to uh, Sherlock Holmes audiobooks uh, from LibriVox on my commute as of late. And. Yeah, I'll, I'll just zone out, uh, what is it, audibly, orally, I'll zoom out, zone out, because I'm too focused on just driving and being safe. I ride a motorcycle every day, so I uh, 
I tried to be extra vigilant. But yeah, I'll just zone out and then suddenly I'll hear something about some redheaded league and just be like, what is going on? And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uses the word ejaculate quite often, not in any form that we would use it today, but rather to say like a sudden interruption. But he even once used like, uh, what was it? Watson was asleep nearby uh, Sherlock. And it says like, he woke because of a sudden ejaculation. <laughs> but it meant like a sudden sound outside or something, not a nocturnal emission. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, that, that's a weird, um, weird thing just to say that, well, well, sorry, a rabbit hole to say that I don't feel bad kind of droning on because some people like to, to commute to droning. And man, can I drone. Yeah. Anyways, history. From a linguistic point of view, Louis Rem- I'm not even going to try out this name anymore. Louis Remacle <laughs> has shown that a good number of the developments that we now consider typical of Walloon appeared between the 8th and 12th centuries. Walloon, quote, had a clearly defined identity from the beginning of the 13th century, end quote. In any case, linguistic texts from the time do not mention the language, although they mention others in the Languedoc family, such as Picard and Lorraine. During the 15th century, scribes in the region called the language Roman when they needed to distinguish it. Um, sorry, it is not until the beginning of the 16th century that first occurred that fir- sorry that first occurrence of the word Walloon appeared in the current linguistic sense. In 1510 or 1511, Jean Le Maire de Belge made the connection between Romand to Voilon. Oh boy, listen to this. I'm, I'm going to do one take of reading this. I don't even know if this is French or what, but I'm just going to go through. And I'm going, yeah, I'm going to not try. I'm just going to read and read. Okay, now at this point, I spend more time describing what I'm about to do than it would actually take for me to poorly, poorly read this. This is not intelligible. Here we go. Et c'est sur l'habitant de Niville par le tevil langage galique que nous appelons un roman. Et de la dit ancien langage volant, un roman de nous aurons un autre galique belliquique. C'est à croire en chanon composé à trois Namur Lige, Florine Adam et la Roman Bombe. Et beaucoup différents du français de quel est plus moderne. Et plus gaillard, gaillard. Shoot, I tried again on the last word. Anyway, that all translates to, and those people, the inhabitants of Nivelles, speak the old Gallic language, which we call Voilon or Romand, R- Romand. And we use the said old Voilon or Romand language in our Belgian Gaul. That is to say, in Hainaut, Cambrai, Artois, Namur, Ligia, Lorraine, Ardennes, and Romand, Brabant, um, and it is very different from French, which is more fashionable and courtly. Okay, so he, uh, yeah, he did not like the Walloon language. The word Walloon thus came closer to its current meaning, the vernacular of the Roman part of the Low Countries. One might say that the period which saw the establishment of the unifying supremacy of the Burgundies, sorry, Bur- Burgundians, um, saw the establishment of the unifying supremacy of the Burgundians in the Walloon country was a turning point in their linguistic history. The crystallization of a Walloon identity, as opposed to that of the Theois, Dutch-speaking regions of the Low Countries, established Walloon as a word for designating its people. Somewhat later, the vernacular of these people became more clearly distinct from Central French and other neighboring Languedoc, prompting the abandonment of the vague term Roman as a linguistic, ethnic, and political designator for Walloon. Also at this time, following the Ordinance of Vier Cotrets in uh, 1539, the French language replaced Latin for all administrative purposes in France. Established as the academic language, French became the object of political of a political effort at normalization. La Pléiade uh, posited the view that when two languages of the same language family coexist, each can be defined only in opposition to the other. Around the year 1600, the French writing system became dominant in the Wallonia. From this time, too, dates a tradition of text 
Texts written in a language marked by traces of spoken Walloon. The written language of the preceding century, scripta, was a composite language with some Walloon characteristics, but it did not attempt to be a systematic reproduction of the spoken language. Okay, we are almost done here. Almost done. Walloon society and culture. Walloon was... Oh, I haven't even been looking at pictures as I go along the way. We'll wrap it up at the end. Walloon was the predominant language of the Walloon people until the beginning of the 20th century, although they had a passing knowledge of French. Since that time, the use of French has spread to the extent that now only 15% of the Walloon population speak their ancestral language. I, I am speaking slower now, just because I feel like we're into things that might actually stick in the head. <laughs> um, so yeah, only 15% of the Walloon population speak their ancestral language. Breaking this statistic down by age, 70 to 80% of the population aged over 60 speak Walloon, while only about 10% of those under 30 do so. Passing knowledge of Walloon is much more widespread, claimed by some 36 to 58 that's specific of the younger age bracket that is passing knowledge. Laurent, uh, yeah, Laurent Henschel estimates that, uh, sorry, estimates there are 1,300,000 bilingual people in Wallonia, Walloon French, Picard French, uh, many French words that pertain to mining and to the textile trade derived from the Walloon Picard complex. Legally, Walloon has been recognized since 1990 by the French community of Belgium, the cultural authority of Wallonia as an indigenous regional language, which must be studied in schools and encouraged. The Walloon cultural movement includes the, the Union Culturelle Walloon, Wallonie, an organization of over 200 amateur theater circles, writers groups, and school councils. About a dozen Walloon magazines publish regularly. The Société de, Société de Langue et de, et de Literature Walloon there's my not even trying anymore, uh, founded in 1856, promotes Walloon literature and the study, dialectology, etymology, etc., of the regional Roman, Roman languages of Wallonia. There is a difference between the Walloon culture, according to the Manifesto for Walloon Culture, and the Walloon language, even if the latter is a part of the culture. So it sounds like there's still some good efforts for preservation. Literature. Walloon language literature has been printed since the 1500s, or at least since the beginning of the 1600s. It had its golden age during the peak of the Flemish immigration to Wallonia in the 19th century. Quote here, That period saw an efflorescence of Walloon literature, plays and poems primarily, and the founding of many the theaters and periodicals. End quote. Pardon me while I cough. <coughs> okay. The New York Public Library holds a large collection of literary works in Walloon, quite possibly the largest outside Belgium, and its holdings are representative of the output. Why, why isn't that library in Wisconsin? Am I right? Out of nearly a thousand works, 26 were published before 1880. Thereafter, the numbers rise gradually year by year, reaching a peak of 69 in 1903. After that, publications in Walloon fell markedly to 11 in 1913. Ives Quariau counted 4,800 plays from 1860 to 1914, published or not. In this period, plays were, almo plays were almost the only popular entertainment in Wallonia, so they would have had a lot. The Walloon language theater remains popular in the region. Theater is flourishing with more than 200 non-professional companies playing in the cities and villages of Wallonia for an audience of over 200,000 each year. Good. During the 19th century renaissance of Walloon language literature, several authors adapted versions of Aesop's fable, fables to, to the racy speech and subject matter of Ligia. They included Charles de Vivier. Um, I'm actually not going to read over all this stuff. Um, decades later, someone else published some hundred... Uh, imitations of La Fontaine in the dialect of Charleroi, more literature published, select fables, the motive among Walloon speakers in both France and Belgium was to assert regional identity against the growing centralism and encroachment of the language of the capital, 
on what had until then been predominantly monoglot areas. There are links between French literature and Walloon literature. For instance, a writer, (laughs) sorry, the writer Raymond Cuneau said the publication of a Walloon poets anthology for editions Gallimard. Um, More stuff that if you really like French literature, I suggest you read this article because there are lots of connections. Um, Somebody, a big theater open connecting to Walloon culture, basically. Someone wanted to develop regular adult attendance. Um, Avant-garde plays. Uh, A scholar said, the dialectual the dialectical culture is no more a sign of attachment to the past, but a way to participate to a new synthesis. Um, and a uh, Walloon is also being used in popular song. The most well-known singer in Walloon in present day Wallonia is William Bunker. Okay. Here's some phrases that I'll try to do the phonetic for, but I forget my IPA a bit. So we've got, the French, uh, sorry, the, the Walloon for its language is wa, sorry, Wallon, Wallon. Um, and I'm only going, we've got here the Walloon pronunciation uh, with phonetic and then the French, Limburgian, Dutch, German, and English words. I'll just read the Walloon in English. We have for by, from goodbye, a contraction of God be with ya. We got... Uh, Jewalt, Jewalt, or Jewalt, Walt, is that aspirated? No, it doesn't indicate. Jewalt. For, for hello, good day, we have, oh my goodness, this is hard. Bonjour, bonjour. For hi, often followed by another expression, we have ah, just ah, the letter A. Ah, I actually don't remember if that's the correct IPA for that sound. I have to see. I don't know if you guys can see this all too. What was this? Um, Where did Walloon go? Oh, it's over here. Okay. That A, let me make sure I'm getting it. Ah. 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 Voila, voila, shoot, now I need a, oh, oh, voila, 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 ah, okay, here we go, Um, goodbye, literally see you again, or see you later, is, ah, ah, oh, shoot, this is really testing me, okay, Okay, that is just V. It's not a. It's not a vowel. Avoir, 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 I don't know. This is hard. Um, how do you say? Is man, comment, comment, What? This is a hard language. Eh, un, but it's nasal. Eh, un, me. Distin, come here, distin, come distin. Um, for how are you? How goes it? How's it going? Come dalin, come da, come dalin. No, de la. Wait, it's not. <clears throat> the last one is not nasal. Oh, oh, oh. Come de la, come de la, or it looks like it's written in. If you are an English reader, you might say "see mint de laws." Okay, and the last last phrase here that I'm trying, I don't know. Jin se na, jin se na, jin se na. Man, interesting language. I see how this may not be mutually intelligible. It really pulls from a lot of stuff. That is quite fascinating. Man, okay. Real quick, the pictures, and then we're done. This has been a long one. Hesta, the Walloon name of the city, Herstel, province de Lige. Got the EU, Belgium, 
Um, the Wallonian crest, cool. Linguistic map of Wallonia. Cool, cool, cool. I'll let you pause there if you want. Main subdivisions of Walloon dialects. We might remember there is a north, a south, a central, whatever, all there. Let's see. In auberge, what what is this word? Auberge. I feel like I should know this. Why do I not know this? Oh, okay. In in auberge. I don't know how that's actually pronounced. Auberge. Sign in coupe. You can try to pronounce that if you want. I'm sorry, but I am uh, prairie dogging right now, turtling. So I need to finish this. Bilingual French Walloon street sign. And here's William Dunker, the famous singer at Orville Brewery. I hope it's this guy. I don't know who it is here. <laughs> oh, right in front. Okay, yeah. R, right. In a cartoon in Walloon for a 2010 issue of Walloon Speaking Magazine. That looks dark. Walloon lyrics to the song Teen Sterale, Time to Go Home. Cool. That's it. Great. I got to go. Got to go. See ya.